Hey everybody, John Skiba here from the Consumer Warrior YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to do a follow-up to a video I did previously on how to win your debt collection lawsuit by compelling private arbitration. I heard a lot of comments uh, from that video. It's been very popular, but a lot of people want to know, okay, if I file a motion to compel private arbitration, what happens next? This is the follow-up to that video. But if this is your first time here to my YouTube channel, please go ahead and click subscribe, check off that little bell, that way you'll be notified each and every week when I put out new videos that'll help you deal with your serious debt problem. All right, so a while back I put out a video that was kind of surprising to me, it was actually very popular, and that was how to win a debt collection lawsuit by compelling private arbitration. Now what this is, kind of the backdrop is, is if you've been sued by a debt collector, whether it be a, an actual creditor, like you know Chase Bank or Wells Fargo, or if you a junk debt buyer like Midland Funding, Portfolio Recovery, one of those guys. Um, within, their law, within their terms and conditions, the credit card that you took out, uh, there is something called an arbitration clause. Now, this arbitration clause generally says that the parties can ask that any dispute, any legal dispute between the parties, be dealt with through private arbitration. The difference between private arbitration and the court process is, uh, the court process is obviously, it's a governmental process. The judicial branch of the government, you know, they file their lawsuit there. You have a judge who makes a decision. Private arbitration is exactly what it sounds like, it's private. It's a private company where essentially you hire a judge or an arbitrator to uh, resolve the dispute between the parties. Now, in many instances, uh, collectors and plaintiffs and creditors, they view arbitration as a benefit to them, not to you. And that's why they include it in the terms and conditions. But when it comes to debt collection lawsuits, you can actually kind of turn the tables on them and you can uh, force the matter to private arbitration. Now, most creditors do not want to go through private arbitration when it comes to debt collection lawsuits. The reason being is that most debt collection lawsuits, the amount of dispute is relatively low compared to what most or what, what a typical arbitration case is. Most debt collection cases are under $10,000, and uh, I'll tell you why uh, they don't want that. One, it kind of messes up the law firm that's handling the cases. It kind of messes up their flow of things. They handle cases in huge volume. Thousands of cases are filed, actually hundreds of thousands of cases are filed nationwide in the United States every single year. The law firms that handle that to be able to process that type of volume, they have to have a lot of systems in place. Their systems are based upon filing the lawsuit in the judicial system and going through uh, a regular court process. They aren't set up to handle private arbitration. So if you demand that the matter be heard through private arbitration, right out of the get-go, you're kind of messing up their system and they don't like that and so they don't want it. Uh, but two, private arbitration is very expensive, particularly for the creditor. If you uh, force it into private arbitration and then they pursue you in there, they may be filing a filing fee of up to $2,000. And you can see real quick, if they're suing you for $2,500 or $3,500, paying a filing fee of $2,000 plus is not something they want to do. Plus there's additional arbitration fees and costs that can be associated with that. So what I've often recommended is that people file in the court system a motion to dismiss and compel private arbitration. If you want to learn more about the details on that, uh, go back and check the other video. We'll put a link down in the notes below this video. I'm not going to go into all the details of how that's done. But this is a follow-up to that video where a lot of people said, okay, great. I filed my motion to dismiss and compel private arbitration. The judge granted it. Now what? <laughs> now what do I do? That's a great question. So here's what you do. I'm going to give a little warning here. This may be a little bit unsatisfactory as far as an answer goes. I'm going to try to tell you what I do. Is um, the, so, so the issue is a lot of people think, okay, I filed my motion to compel, it's been granted, uh, now what do I need to go do to file the case with uh, the American Arbitration Association, AAA, or JAMS, they're another private arbitration company. How do I do that? The question I think you need to ask yourself is, should it be you who's filing for private arbitration? Private arbitration or a lawsuit, whatever it is, they're only filed if you actually have a claim against the other party. And so let's say that Portfolio Recovery Associates, a junk debt buyer, let's say that they have filed a lawsuit against you, you've got the judge to agree to push the matter to private arbitration. It's Portfolio that has a claim against you. You don't have a claim against them. So why would you file uh, a case 
for private arbitration. Why would you initiate it? You should require them to initiate it. Now I'm going to tell you this, I've never seen them initiate private arbitration even when the court says, okay, go ahead and do that process. They don't do it. And so what often happens is often courts will not dismiss your case outright, but they will just put, they'll stay the case while the parties pursue private arbitration. I often recommend uh, reaching out to the other party, sending them a letter, sending them an email, something in writing saying, okay, the court said that you've got to pursue your claim through arbitration. Go ahead and file it. I'm here waiting to defend it. If they don't do that, and then you have to go back to the judge, and the judge is going to say, okay, I told you to go do private arbitration. You asked for it. How come you didn't do it? You can then respond with, look, judge, I sent them this letter. I don't have any claims against portfolio recovery or whoever the creditor is. They have, they're saying they have claims against me. They need to bring the claim in private arbitration, not me. And then I would follow that up with a motion to dismiss with prejudice. With prejudice means it can't be filed again. And your argument is this, look judge, you told us to go to private arbitration. You held the case in abeyance while we went through that process. They refused to initiate arbitration and now they want to come back and fight this out in the court. They've had now two bites at the apple. They had their initial filing in the court system and then they had the opportunity to go to private arbitration. They didn't do it. And so because of that, their case should be just dismissed for lack of prosecution. That's the approach that I would take. Again, you don't have claims against the creditor. They have them against you. It's, it's nonsensical to me that you would be the one to initiate arbitration when in, you, know, you wouldn't even be here but for them filing this lawsuit against you. So I hope that's helpful. But if you have questions on that, I'm sure you do. Put them down in the comments. I'll try to take a look at these and respond to them the best I can. But I, I think that's the way to do it is you need to put the, put the onus back on them to pursue the case or arbitration. Make sure you send something in writing after the court grants your order to compel private arbitration. Send them a letter, send them an email saying, okay, I'm here. Let's do this. And uh, if they don't do it, then when you go back to the court, ask the court to dismiss it with prejudice for failure to prosecute. If you're in the state of Arizona and you need help with a case like this or bankruptcy or any other big debt issue, feel free to give me a call. Click on the link below. I'm happy to discuss uh, what kind of your different options are in dealing with these debt problems and help get you back on track. Thanks for watching today.